All right, well, before I get this video started out, um, I just want to uh, speak my piece on a uh, subject, and then we'll get into the video. Uh, lately, we've been having a lot of people uh, coming on here with smart and rude comments and this sort of thing and that sort of thing, telling me I should do this and do that and telling me how to run my channel. And the uh, way, way I look at that is, uh, if you don't like it, go watch another video. And if you keep it up, I'm just going to block you, and you're not going to be able to comment on any more of the stuff on the videos. So that's the way that's the way that goes. And uh, anyway, other than that, this is a uh, a uh, power supply that I got in uh, in the mail, uh, uh, a uh, eBay purchase, and it was actually packed very well. Uh, it was all kind of packing peanuts, uh, and uh, it was wrapped in this. Uh, let me get this thing opened up and see what we got All right, so here is a sort of rusted faded looking Sears silver tone power shifter uh, This is a model 6686 uh, With the chassis number being one three nine one five one that's Probably more than likely Sears stock number as well because they tend to use numbers like that on some of their stuff But anyway, this uh, this is a little power supply and it allows you to run farm radios or battery operated radios uh, As some people call them farm radios uh, off of uh, regular 110 volt uh, wall current AC wall current it works uh, about like uh, any other power supply, uh, except it uh, uh, it converts 110 volts into uh, your 90 volt B plus DC from AC to DC, and then it also converts your uh, one and a half volt tube filaments from AC to DC as well. Uh, a lot of tube filaments and uh, AC DC sets run off of AC, but it, uh, as uh, these radios were intended to be run off of batteries, they're set up to run off of DC. So this will convert your tube filament voltage into DC as well. Not much to this little box here. Uh, uh, the caps take up most of the room. And uh, here's the funny part is, is you got a, a 1500 um, microfarad capacitor and it's only 3 volts. and. <laughs> Look how big it is. I mean, there's my finger. It's uh, huge, and uh, yeah, I could replace this with a like a 2200 at 35 volts, and it'd be like that, you know, a little tiny thing. So uh, we'll have to get those replaced anyway. I'm sure they're probably no good. But uh, anyway, here's our uh, selenium. Let's like. So what it is is you've got two selenium rectifiers one for each uh, a uh, this one's for the a uh, a power circuit which is your filament and the b plus is over here uh, on that uh, selenium um, so what i need to do is just basically measure the output power from here and here and see what uh, our voltages are uh, and see if those selenium's uh, have started uh, to go out usually uh, you'll get a, a lot a, a quite a bit uh, difference in voltage when these get weak all right measuring our uh, a volts or a section of our power supply we're supposed to get about three volts off of this selenium rectifier this selenium or this circuit is grounded through chassis ground which this is hooked to so this is actually riveted down to the chassis right there so that's grounded um, coming off our lead we're getting about three volts there so that looks good all right measuring our uh, B plus um, on our plug here Getting about 75 volts uh, according to this output. I'm supposed to be getting about 128 volts. 
So yeah, I'd say that's a little, at zero milliamps, I'm supposed to be getting uh, 128 volts. Uh, yeah, I would say that's definitely low. The lowest reading is 13, at 13 milliamps, I'm supposed to be getting 85 volts. So that's lower than the, <laughs> the lowest uh, uh, voltage uh, rating they've got on here. So I'm more willing to bet that selenium is probably weak. And measuring the input voltage to um, the input voltage to the selenium rectifier, we've got our B negative there. Uh, and on the input of that selenium rectifier, I'm getting 108 volts. Uh, the schematic says 100 volts, but uh, that's probably because uh, modern uh, wall outlets are more like 120 and instead of 110. So there you have it. Uh, getting good input voltage, just not, not very good output. Okay, so what I've done here is I've replaced... Uh, the selenium rectifier with this NTE 125 diode, which I guess is probably about like a 1 in 4007. Um, anyway, so we got that replaced, and I replaced the capacitors because these capacitors, these filter capacitors, really make a difference with the voltage. Um, with the old filter cap, I was only getting about 85 volts. And when I changed it, now I'm getting almost 150 volts. Um, let's take a measurement here. We're just uh, coming right off of our uh, diode here. And I'm getting about 150 volts DC there, which would be way too high for, um, for me to use on any radio. So we're going to have to... Uh, we're gonna have to drop that down with a resistor. All right, so with the selenium rectifier in here I'm getting uh, I want to measure uh, Here I want to measure the amount of voltage I'm getting with it unloaded I've got a radio over here for a load um, so I can get an idea about what it is loaded and what it is unloaded. Because these little small supplies like that, uh, you know, you put any kind of load on there, drag them down pretty good. So with the selenium in here, uh, I'm getting about 140 volts. Uh, so let's hook it up and see what it is loaded down. Okay, so what I wanted to do was replace these capacitors because they seem to affect the voltage quite a bit and um, put the selenium in here so I know what I'm getting normally. Uh, I put a new resistor in here, it's 1800 uh, ohm or 1.8k 1 um, resistor. So I did replace that. Um, but I kind of butchered up the other one that was in there anyway, so uh, I think it was off a little bit. So anyway, we've got it replaced, and um, um, so what I want to do is, is plug this thing in and see what we're getting um, on the B plus side, because this uh, selenium is runs the B plus with the radio on and loaded down. And that sounds like crap, but that really doesn't matter right now. So loaded down, I'm getting about 90 volts. At 87 volts there. So that'll give me a baseline to work off of. All right, so this is just something to correct I said earlier. I thought this uh, selenium might have been a little weak because I was getting about 75 volts off of it, which is about, you know, the... 15 volts lower than what I needed to get uh, which is about 90 so um, yeah so I think that uh, selenium's okay it's just the uh, capacitors that were dragging it down the old caps so the selenium seems okay but um, 
I don't know. I'm thinking about just replacing it with a diode anyway because these things are not very reliable, especially in being kind of old. So um, I like to keep things as original as possible, but I would like to replace the selenium on the B plus side. Uh, it being a little bit higher voltage, uh, I'll be more concerned about it on there. Uh, the filament side, I'm not going to really worry about that. That's only about 3 volts, and I don't really think that that is really, um, I wouldn't think it'd be compromised as much as something with, you know, almost 100 volts on it. Alright, I've got my uh, diode installed and my new drop-in resistor. I ended up settling on a 3K resistor. There was a 1.8 in there, as I said earlier. So, now, um, I'm going to start working on the, the uh, ACE A voltage side, the B plus, or B, uh, B voltage and A voltage. A voltage being the, the filament, as I said before. So, uh, I've got a couple of capacitors in here. I don't have a 1500, but I do have some 2200 uh 25 volt nichicons that i believe i'm going to use and uh basically there's two different ones here this is a filter choke here and basically they just um they go from the filter choke to ground and uh so we're just have to tack some in here uh it's going to be kind of difficult to use uh radial leaded uh they're quite a bit smaller than these original ones. Uh, I like radial leaded because you can use them on a lot of different applications, but uh, in this case here, it'd be a little bit easier if they were axial leaded, but that's what I've got, so that's what, <laughs> what we're going to go with. All right, so those new capacitors seem to be doing good. I measured about 1.9 on um, this one and 1.9, or excuse me, one point, a little under 1.4 on the other one uh, volts. So that should be, yeah, you know, about what we need here. It's, the voltage is switchable on this jack here depending on how many tubes you have. And this is a four tube set, so it's going to be the lowest. Uh, so uh, it's going to be running off the lowest voltage which is basically 1.5 volts uh, one and a half volts what it says inside the radio so anyway um yeah um uh, guess we'll be wrapping this up pretty soon i'll uh, put it back together and i'm probably going to clean it up a little bit make it look a little bit better but it's a power supply it's not a radio so yeah as long as it works hey that's the main thing